good afternoon everyone myself dr surbhi and i'll be speaking on the topic of basal ganglia uh, so these are the topics that we'll be covering today introduction description of individual structures afferent efferent connections circuitry uh, neuropsychiatric manifestations of basal ganglia summary and then reference first of all what is basal ganglia Basal ganglia are the large masses of grey matter which is situated in the basal part of the white core of each cerebral hemisphere lateral to the thalamus. They are essential constituents of extrapyramidal uh, system. Uh, a basic difference between ganglia and nuclei. Uh, ganglia refers to the structures that contain a number of cell bodies of the peripheral nervous system. Whereas the nuclei, it refers to the structures that contain a number of cell bodies of the central nervous system. So it is the ganglia is for the PNS and the nuclei is for the CNS. And it is from the plexus, the ganglia, and the nuclei it occurs in the gray matter of the brain. And the ganglia, the uh, examples are like the dorsal root ganglia, the autonomic ganglia, cranial nerve ganglia. And in the case of nuclei, we have the caudate, putamen, dentate, embryoform, pallidum, striatum, uh, st uh, substantia nigra, and subthalamic nuclei. The components of basal ganglia. So basal ganglia is formed by four components, the striatum, the pallidum, the subthalamic nucleus, and the substantia nigra. The striatum is formed by the caudate nucleus and the putamen. And the pallidum is formed by the globus pallidus interna and the globus pallidus externa. Now, brief discussion on individual structures, starting with the corpus striatum. Corpus striatum, it is situated lateral to the thalamus. Topographically, it is divided into the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus. As you can see in the picture, the lentiform nucleus is the bigger one and the caudate nucleus is the S-shaped. Uh, both of them are divided by a band of nerve fibers, which is the internal capsule. Further, the lentiform nucleus is divided into the lateral part of putamen and the medial palar part of the globus pallidus. So it is important to understand that lentiform nucleus is not a structure. It is basically formed by putamen and the globus pallidus together. Uh, this diagram shows us, it, and you can see it very clearly from this diagram, that the globus pallidus, it, and there is the go, globus pallidus, you have the head of the caudate nucleus, and we can see the relation that it has with the thalamus and the claustrum. Then coming to the uh, globus pallidus is also termed as the paleostriatum or pallidum and it is largely efferent. When we will be talking about the circuitry, we will discuss furthermore about the efferent and the afferent fibers. Caudate nucleus plus put putamen together form the neostriatum or the striatum and it is largely efferent. The caudate nucleus. Caudate nucleus uh, the pink and the purple one is the caudate nucleus, basically. So the caudate nucleus is large. Uh, it is a large comma-shaped mass of grey matter which surrounds the thalamus and is itself surrounded by the lateral ventricle. The blue one is the lateral ventricle above the caudate nucleus. And we can see the relationship it has with, it, with them. The lentiform nucleus. The lentiform nucleus, uh, the name is derived from, it, from the shape of the structure. It is a lens-shaped uh, mass of grey matter beneath the insula and forms the lateral boundary of the internal capsule. And it is basically, uh, it is not mentioned here in the diagram, but putamen and the globus pallidus together form the lentiform nucleus. So the green structure is the lentiform nucleus. And it has three surfaces and is divided into two parts. A vertical plate of white matter divides the lentiform nucleus into two parts. We refer to the okay. putamen and the globus pallidus. So the putamen, it is the larger lateral part and it is densely packed with small cells and it is darker in color and similar to caudate nucleus. And if you look at it grossly, whereas the globus pallidus, it is smaller medial part, which is light in color and consists of large motor cells. It is subdivided into the medial medullary lamina by off white matter into outer and the inner segment. The functions of the corpus triatum. So the corpus triatum controls the autonomic associated movements like swinging of the arms during walking and it helps in smoothening the voluntary motor activity of the body. So these are the two functions and it is grossly the motor functions. So it is in the 
movement of the arms and while walking and the voluntary motor activity of the body the claustrum claustrum is a thin saucer shaped mass of gray matter which is between the putamen and the in the and the insula you can see it in the diagram it is between the putamen and the insula and it is considered as a part of ins insula and the function and the connection are still not known the subthalamus or the subthalamic nuclei nucleus it is small nucleus which is located in the ventral part of the diencephalon and it can appears like a biconvex lens in coronal section it is located caudal to the lateral half of the thalamus and inferomedial to the globus pallidus and it is separated from the thalamus by a small nucleus which is called zona inserta and subthalamic nucleus and the globus pallidus are interconnected by the subthalamic fasciculus fasciculus which transverse the internal capsule the substantia nigra the substantia nigra is a curved pigmented band of gray matter which is situated between the teg tegmentum and the crus cerebri cerebri the mesencephalic it is mesencephalic in origin and it is divided into two parts the pars compacta and the pars reticulata the pars compacta it is the dorsal part of the substantia nigra and it contains the dopaminergic neurons that project into the striatum and it may be associated with schizophrenia whereas the pars reticulata reticulata it is the ventral part of the substantia nigra and it re receives the striatal input and may be associated with the parkinson's disease this is the diagram it is the cut section and it shows the substantia nigra and it is of it is divided into two parts which is the pars compacta and the pars reticulata reticulata now the functions of basal ganglia basal ganglia is concerned with planning and programming of the voluntary movements it determines how rapidly a movement is to be performed and how large the movement must be decrease muscle tone and inhibit the un unwanted muscular activity it regulates the muscle tone and helps in smoothing the voluntary muscle active motor activities of the body controls the autonomic associated movements like swinging of the arms during walking it control control group of movements for emotional expression and controls the reflex muscular activities this is the blood supply of basal ganglia the blood supply basal nuclei blood supply of the uh, it comprises it is mainly comprises of the middle cerebral artery and the main artery it is known as the lenticular striate artery which provide provides most of the circulation to the striatum and the lenticular nucleus blood supply of the basal nuclei there are also small amount of supply from the anterior cerebral artery and the anterior choroidal artery both of which are also branches of the internal carotid artery supply supplying the more anterior aspect of the ganglia and this particularly large artery is referred to as the medial striate artery of Huebner and the substantia nigra and the subthalamic nuclei are the are more posterior and thus they receive their uh, arterial supply from the posterior communicating arteries and the venous drainage is via the striate branches of the internal cerebral vein <laughs> functional circuitry of the basal ganglia now the inputs of the ganglia so the striatum is the major recipient of the basal ganglia and three major afferent systems are known to terminate in the striatum so it is important to understand that striatum is the one which is the major recipient and this is the diagram which shows the striatum uh, you can see these substantia striatum So the three inputs are the cortico uh, striatal, the nigro striatal, and the thalamo striatal. The cortico striatal it originates from all regions of the neocortex and it arising from the pyramidal cells of five and six. Use the excitatory transmitter glutamate. So here it is the glutamate, and afferent uh, terminates in the sensory motor cortex, putamen association region, and the caudate nucleus. and prefrontal cortex terminates in the head of the caudate the nigro striatum it arises from the substantia nigra pars compacta uses the neurotransmitter dopamine and it involves both the direct and the indirect pathway dopaminergic fibers act on the d1 receptor activate the direct pathway 
and increase the motor activity. Fibers that act on, on the D2 receptors act on the indirect pathway and increases the motor activity. So, So uh, the dopaminergic fibers on the D1 they act via the uh, they activate the direct pathway, whereas the D2 is in the indirect pathway. Thalamostriatal arises from the thalamus. The thalamine nuclei it provide providing projections are are inter intralaminar nuclei, particularly the central medial nucleus. Now this was all about the inputs. Now the outputs of the basal ganglia. This internal segment of the globus pallidus is the source of output of the basal ganglia and the globus pallidus provides a projection to the ventral, lat ventral lateral and the ventral anterior nuclei of the thalamus and to the intralaminar thalami nuclei, especially the central medial nucleus. So you can see the darker arrows, they are the inhibitory pathway and the lighter ones, they are the excitatory pathway. So the globus pallidus is the one which is governing all this. Output of the basal ganglia. Uh, the other source is substantia nigra, pars reticulata, which also provides projection to the ventral anterior and the ventral lateral thalamic nuclei. Both project to the thalamic nuclei, which in turn project to the prefrontal and the premotor area. Finally, the output pathways of the basal ganglia, the globus pallidus, and the substantia nigra, pars reticularis, use GABA. Now the circuits of the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia or the nuclei are heavily, heavily interconnected. It plays an important role in motor planning and modulation. The basal ganglia use different pathways to initiate and terminate the motor program by controlling the muscle tone, muscle length, speed and strength of the movement by using the pyramidal system as the executor. The basal ganglia uses three pathways, the direct pathway, the indirect pathway, and the hyperdirect pathway. The direct pathway. Uh, the direct pathway starts from the cortex and projects to the striatum, the caudate nucleus, and the putamen with excitatory glutaminergic neurons. And the neurons from the striatum, which are inhibitory, GABAergic, send their exons to the medial globus pallidus and substantia nigra, pars reticularis. Reticulatum. The neurons from the internal globus pallidus and the pars reticula substantia nigra send their exons to the thalamus. So they're sending it to, to, the, to the thalamus, which is excitatory again, which is, with, they are also inhibitory. So, so they are also inhibitory. Direct pathway. The fibers that travel from the pallidum to the thalamus form two white matter fascicle, fascicles called the ansa reticularis and the reticular fasciculus. They fuse into one pathway called the thalamic fasciculus just before they enter the thalamus. From the thalamus, the excitatory pathway goes to the cortex, the prefrontal, the premotor and the supplementary cortex, where they affect the planning of the movement by synapsing with the neurons of the corticospinal, corticobulbar tracts in the brainstem and the spinal cord. In summary, we have the following connections. So one is the connection which is formed with, between the cortex and the striatum, which is glutaminergic. Then we have the striatum which, and the uh, substantia nigra, which is GABAergic, and the substantia nigra and the thalamus, which is again GABAergic. So the entire system functions on the principle of positive feedback. Since the two of the inhibitory synapses, the latter ones, are, uh, are serially connected, that means that the first inhibitory neuron suppresses the activity of the second inhibitory neuron. The result of this is reduction of the inhibitory influence that the globus pallidus has over the thalamus. So called the disinhibition of thalamus, which is equivalent to excitation of motor cortex. So the final function of the direct pathway of the basal ganglia is to excite the motor cortex or to increase the motor activity. Now coming to the indirect pathway. In the indirect pathway, it begins from the cortex, projecting to the striatum. Instead of sending exons directly to the globus pallidus or the striatum, substantia nigra, they project to the external globus pallidus. And the neurons from the external globus pallidus send the inhibitory fibers to the subthalamic nuclei instead of, instead 
of sending directly to the thalamus. That is why it is called indirect. From the subthalamic nucleus, neurons send their exons to the uh, globus pallidus and the substantia nigra internal and they continue as the direct pathway with gabinergic inhibitory neurons to the thalamus and the glutamate excitatory efferents to the cortex. So it is almost the same but it's just that the exons are not directly entering the pathway. So functionally the striatum inhibits the external globus pallidus and thus calls, causes the disinhibition of the subthalamus. And for the reason, the neurons of the th subthalamus become more active and they excite the internal segment of the globus pallidus, which in end, in end inhibits the thalamic nuclei. So the final result of this pathway is decreased activity of the cortical motor, motor neurons and consequential suppression of the extra temporaneous movements. The hyperdirect pathway. It consists of neurons projecting from the cortex directly to the subthal subthalamic nucleus. Those fibers convey strong excitatory signals to the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra with shorter conduction time than the direct and the indirect pathway by passing the striatum. So when receiving glutaminergic inputs from the co cerebral cortex directly to the subthalamic nucleus, it also excites the globus pallidus internals, internal and the substantia nigra, thus suppressing the thalamic activity on the cerebral cortex and increasing the inhibitory influence on the upper motor neurons. So as a result, together with the indirect pathway, only the selected motor program is executed and other competing motor programs are cancelled. So when a given motor program is computed by the cerebral cortex, it is first conveyed to the basal ganglia via the glutaminergic projections to the striatum releasing the intended movement and suppressing the unintended ones. The direct pathway funnels the information from the striatum to the globus pallidus interna and the substantia nigra via garbanergic inhibitory projections, selectively reducing its activity and releasing firing from this thalamocortical neurons to initiate the movement. Along with the initial segment, uh, signal to the striatum, the cerebral cortex suppresses competing motor programs by the indirect and the hyperdirect pathways. When excited by the glutaminergic inputs of the cerebral cortex, striatum sends inhibitory signals to the glu uh, globus pallidus externa, which normally exerts garbanergic inhibition on the striatum substantia nigra. So the subthalamic nucleus, sorry. The glu uh, glutaminergic excitatory neurons of the subthalamic nucleus can then excite the globus pallidus interna and the substantia nigra, suppresses the thalamic activity on the cerebral cortex and increasing inhibitory influence on the upper motor neurons. Now the neuropsychiatric manifestations of basal ganglia. First, the hypokinetic movement disorders, Parkinson's disease or the paralysis agitans. About two thirds of the patients with early Parkinson's disease will show abnormalities of coordinator function. It is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder after Alzheimer's disease and usually occurs after 50 years of age due to deficiency of anti-dopamine in the corpus striatum following a lesion in the substantia nigra. Dopamine synthesized in the melanin containing pigment is the melanin containing pigment cell, cells of the substantia nigra is transported to the striat, corpus striatum through nigrostriate fibers. Dopamine causes inhibition of cells within the corpus right. Characteristics of Parkinson's, resting tremors, pin rolling movement, lead pipe or cogwheel type of muscular dystrophy, mask-like face of, or loss of facial expression, stiff shuffling gait, stooped uh, posture and bradykinesia. Symptoms. Positive symptoms, they refer to the overt symptom that should not be present. These include hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thought, positive formal thought disorder, or bizarre behavior. Negative symptoms refer to the characteristics that should be present. These include alogia, affective flattening, uh, evolution, and anhedonia, and asociality, social withdrawal, cognitive deficits, difficulties with memory and attention. Psychiatric manifestations of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease dementia, it is characterized by impairment of memory, visual spatial skills, uh, information processing, speed, attention, explicit recall, spatial planning, perseveration, verbal fluency and poverty of thought. 
depression it is the most common psychiatric disorder in the parkinson's disease and depression is also considered a risk factor for the development of dementia anxiety or panic higher in the younger adults psychosocial factors loss of confidence loss of mobility and the non verbal emotional responses to social interactions apathy manifest as indifference and lack of motivation initiation perseverance interest in new things a concern for one's health and it is associated with cognitive dysfunction now depression basal ganglia disturbances plays an important part in depression two interrelated basal ganglia thalamocortical circuits are important in the pathophysiology of depression depression is associated with this function of the prefrontal cortex so it has shown it has been shown that the depressed patients performing a complex planning task fail to demonstrate the normal control finding of increased caudate activity activation with increasing task difficulty mri studies have also reported increased incidence of caudate hyperintensities in the elderly depressed patients pathophysiology the cell bodies of almost all non adrenergic neurons are located in the locus cerulis of the brain stem and project rostrally to the hypothalamus basal ganglia limbic system and the cerebral cortex the medial forebrain bundle is the key ascending the norepinephrine path in norepinephrine pathway to the anterior cortical structures Sub sustained stress eventually results in decreased the in decreased mfb neurotransmission which may account for energia aridonia psychomotor disturbance and cause depression wilson's disease or the hepatolenticular degeneration it is original uh, its original description in 1912 emphasized the importance of mental changes in the disease so it is an autosomal recessive disorder and the uh, pathology is degeneration of lentiform nucleus accumulation of copper in the eye which is characterized by clear flesh flesher rings which are whitish whitish rings at the sclerocorneal junction of or or the limbus mutation in copper transporting atp is encoded by the atp 7b gene on the chromosome 13 the gene defect leads to accumulation of copper in liver and also copper deposition in astrocytes particularly evident in the basal ganglia accumulation of copper leads to neurological and neuropsychiatric manifestations of this disorder the most common reason for psychiatric referral are behavioral and personality changes with this inhibition bizarre or impulsive behavior being present in about quarter of patients and depression in about one fifth the presence of kf rings on slit lamp examination is the single and the most important clinical diagnostic sign kf is also observed in about half of the patients with neurological or psychiatric patients uh, low serum levels of ceruloplasmin may be normal in 100% of the patient and high urinary copper excretion the gold standard test for wilson's disease is liver biopsy and staining for copper mri shows reduced t1 signal and increased t2 signal in basal ganglia hyperkinetic disorders like chorea ethetosis hemibelismus and tics chorea of two types sindeham choreas and the huntington's chorea uh, the differences between the two uh the former one it is mostly seen in children about 5 to 15 years of age group and more commonly in girls whereas huntington's chorea is seen in adults 30 to 45 years of age group and autosomal dominant pathophysiology uh the antibodies which are produced by the antigens of streptococcal bacilli in the caudate nucleus in the putamen and it is huntington's is a degenerative disorder so degeneration of gaba secreting neurons of striatum involuntary movements relatively less rapid and jerky whereas in huntington's it is more rapid and jerky ct scan of the brain shows no significant finding whereas in huntington's it shows enlarged lateral ventricle due to degeneration of caudate nucleus uh the sindeham has full recovery whereas huntington's doesn't have a recovery ethetosis it consists of slow sinus writing movements also called the ethetoid movements involves digital segments of the limbs and occurs more in the muscles of the fingers and the toes than in the proximal muscles of the limbs it is due to the lesion in the neostriatum and the globus pallidus breaking neuronal circuitry involving basal nuclei and the cerebral cortex balismus it is due to the vascular lesion of the subthalamic nucleus 
and it is characterized by violent burst of irregular movements in the trunk girdles and the proximal extremities involves the proximal musculature of opposite extremity and limb suddenly flies about in all directions out of control so restriction to one limb monobalismus restriction to both the upper and the lower limbs and the, on the contralate is due to the contralateral side of the lesion which is known as hemibalismus gilles de la torrex syndrome so it is tics are rapid recurring motor movements or vocalizations that are non rhythmic involuntary or semi voluntary and sudden in onset involve one muscle or a group of muscle and is characterized by their anatomical location number frequency duration and complexity there is diffuse process in the brain involving cst uh, cstc pathways in the frontal lobe and basal ganglia involving including the striatum fahers disease idiopathic cal calcification of the basal ganglia it is it has the linkage to chromosome number 14q and in a family with multiple affected members genetic anticipation is also found a uh, progression a uh, progressive calcium deposition in the basal ganglia onset is between the age group of 20 to 40 which is associated with schizophreniform psychosis and catatonic symptoms and onset between 40 to 60 is associated with dementia and chorioacidosis neuroleptic induced movement disorders neuroleptic induced parkinsonism it is characterized by tremors rigidity bradykinesia bradyphrenia symptoms develop within days to weeks after the, after the treatment with t2 blockers and the incidence is higher in 60 and above and susceptibility is more amongst females decrease in the nigrostriadal dopamine activity due to depletion of dopaminergic dopamine pre synaptic stores which is seen with respirin and dopamine blocking agents antipsychotics and the atypical calcium blocking agents like cinnarizine neuroleptic induced acute dystonia torticollis or retrocollis trismus impaired swallowing speaking or breathing slurred speech tongue protrusion or dysfunction ocular gyrus priasis and of oxytonus develops within minutes of receiving uh, parenteral high potency fgas but develops within days of starting or increasing oral antipsychotic dose or reducing a medication used to treat the eps neuroleptic induced acute akathisia develops within weeks after standing or starting or increasing the dose of medication or after decreasing the use of medication used to treat the eps lasts less than 6 months incidence is 20 to 45% patients of on the antipsychotic drugs and also associated with severe distress suicidality and a higher risk of developing tardive dyskinesia and poor treatment outcome characterized by intense dysphoria and in inner sense of restlessness in addition one of the following movements should be present like fidgeting or swinging of the legs rocking from foot to foot by standing pacing lifting the feet as if marching in place crossing and uncrossing the leg while sitting and inability to sit or stand in one place for several minutes decreasing dopamine tone in ventral tegmental area and the substantia nigra is basically the reason neuroleptic induced tardive dyskinesia develops after almost 2 months of exposure to the dopamine blocking agents or 1 month if the patient is above the age group of 60 patient demonstrates involuntary movement of the tongue twisting or protrusion jaw chewing lips smacking or puckering trunks and extremities it is sustained d2 receptor blockage resulting in the receptor hypersensitivity obsessive compulsive disorder ocd is characterized by presence of obsessions and compulsions and they are intrusive and unwanted repetitive mood thoughts urge or impulses that lead to marked increase in anxiety or distress cst c which is the cortico substriatal thalamic cortical circuitry plays an important role in this hyperactivity of the orbito frontal cortex and the anterior cingulate gyrus range of the nd system contributes to the ocd including serotonergic dopaminergic glutaminergic and gabaergic systems imaging imaging studies of ocd show both reduced and increased volumes of caudate nucleus schizophrenia 
Schizophrenia is one of the most complex, chronic and challenging psychiatric disorders that affect how a person thinks, feels or behaves. It is a syndrome of disorganized thought, delusions, hallucinations and impaired psychosocial functioning. Prevalence is about 1%. Onset in late adolescence or early adulthood, rarely seen before adolescence or after 40 years of age. Peak age of onset are between 20 to 38 amongst males and 26 to 32 amongst females. Uh, etiology. While, while many factors have been associated with development of schizophrenia, including genetics, early environment, neurobiology, psychological and social processes, the exact cause is unknown. Pathophysiology. The basal ganglia volumetric increases of the caudate putamen complex is seen. So electron microscope studies suggest an increase in the number of synapses in the caudate and the putamen, suggesting increased neuronal activity in the basal ganglia. Progressive supranuclear palsy, steel rigidson olisbisky syndrome. PSP accounts for 4% of all the cases with Parkinsonism and onset of symptoms is usually up after the age of 60. And all the races and both the genders are equally involved, whereas male can be slightly more involved. Clinical features, progressive Parkinsonism with symmetric bradykinesia, axial rigidity, paralysis of downward vertical gaze, postural instability with frequent falls, ocular motility disturbances, dysarthria or dysphagia, and facial expressions are almost like worried or astonished. Psychiatric manifestations of personality change, abnormal behavior, emotional liability, depression, and social withdrawal. Pathophysiology, there is a broader, broader involvement of basal ganglia and PSP than in the Parkinson's disease. PSP affects the substantia nigra as well as the striatum, thalamus, subthalamus, and the other brainstem nuclei and the pre-aqueductal gray matter. PSP is a tautopathy. Pathological finding is high density tau protein neurofibrillary tangles, neuronal loss and gliosis. Summary, uh, the basal ganglia are a group of subcortical nuclei of varied embryonic origin. It co its components are caudate nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra. Its main function are initiation and execution of complex patterns of motor activity and coordinative control of sequence of motor patterns. Abnormalities of the basal ganglia give rise to various abnormal involuntary movements. Important clinical syndromes resulting from the damage of the basal ganglia are Parkinson's disease, Parkinsonian syndromes, Huntington's disease and Wilson's disease. The importance of the basal ganglia from the psychiatric aspect is the development of neuroleft induced movement disorders, drug induced Parkinsonism, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, acute dystonia, acute akathasia, and tardive dyskinesia. My references were from the uh, complex, uh, comprehensive textbook of psychiatry by Kaplan and Sadoff and Inglebeard, Clinical Neuroanatomy. Thank you.